Good morning, Lance. Good day, Bruce. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Remind me what time zone you're in. Uh, I am on the east coast of the U.S. Okay. How about you? Mountain. Okay. Are you in Utah? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. I'm in Maryland. Close to D.C. It might just be a us. I know Roto, I think he's traveling today. So, yeah, we might have a uh, smaller group, shorter meeting. I know Hakan also had, I think, said that he was starting a new position that he could tell us about in February, but uh, we, we haven't heard from him since the switch. So he's probably very busy. <laughs> oh, here's Roto. <clears throat> Good morning. Rodo, how are you? I didn't know if you were traveling. <laughs> no, no, not on Wednesday. Okay. Hi, Lance. Cool. Hi, Bruce. How was the weekend? Good. Good. Great. It's, it's summer here. It was hot. Oh, <laughs> so nice. It was uh, fairly mild here. Have you guys <laughs> been uh, getting snow, Bruce, or no? Yeah, we got a skip last night. Okay. Good. All right, let me share my screen. Where are you located, Rodo? I mean, this is in Argentina. It's La Plata, Argentina, close to Buenos Aires. Oh, nice. Let's see. Okay. So welcome everyone to the uh, um, January 30th, uh, 2023 Aries Didcom Working Group. Um, please be aware of the antitrust uh, policy for Hyperledger as well as the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. And uh, this meeting is uh, weekly and uh, our focus is on uh, accelerating the momentum of Didcom V2 within Aries. Let me share the meeting uh, page for today. Uh, if you'd like, please add yourself to the attendees list. Uh, I guess. All right. And uh, I mostly copied uh, things from last week so catching up on aip3 uh, aries agent test harness uh, updates and if we want to talk about gut alliance but uh yeah we we could add anything we want to the uh schedule for today so just let me know and we will add it um okay i just see bruce and roto so the usuals um but yeah let's do uh updates any any updates uh from the attendees or or related to uh status updates for projects mm, let's see oh the the only maybe the only update is maybe related uh, is that I, that i'll be working with the Kerry working group on this mm. uh, Kerry light that is an alternative to a, a PRD ID. Uh, so I, I need to still make some uh, refinements on the on the proposal. I'm gonna meet today with Phil, who's one of the Kerry guys who's working on did Kerry. Uh, and after that, I, I maybe show that to the ADIS community in general. Great. How How is that going? Um, I guess, do you have any uh, additional thoughts since uh, you presented it to the carry group? Or you think you will after you talk to Phil? No, it's, I think it's fine. It's just it's doing the same as did PR is working the algo 2. So the algo 2 allows you to put an encryption key and to put a service endpoint on the on the document and be resolved 
just by, by looking at the PRD ID. In that case, it's gonna be kind of similar, but you wanna have like a, a small DID method with a query with a query parameter on the DID method that the query parameter is gonna contain the the rest of the of the message that needs to be resolved to produce the fuel document. But it's gonna be you can verify everything just by looking at, at that pool uh, DID. The DID plus the the parameter, the query okay. parameter, the query right. parameters. Now, are we? I guess what what is that did document? Um, uh, yeah, how should I ask this? How how does the did document differ from like the peer did? Did document well in the in the, oh, the the document is something that you compose based on the information that you have, um, so it sh should be look like the same. If you you can produce the the the, the document, the 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 thing is that you should be able to recover the, the information that you want from the DID document. In that case, for a basic peer to peer communication, you need two things. One is the public encryption key. And the other one is the service endpoint. So if you can recover those two elements, you are done. You are just doing the same as PRD ID. That's that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Great. All right. Uh Bruce, do you have any updates you want to give? Un unfortunately, no. The student meeting is only bi-weekly and so it's tomorrow okay yeah fair enough uh okay let's see just going through real quick i'm looking to see if any of these things remind me of updates um certainly the well, uh, so in the Aries framework JavaScript meeting uh, they showed OIDC for VC uh, so open ID connect uh, for VC um, as a uh, just a client um, uh, receiving uh, a credential, um, what they call a pre-authorized, uh, which I think is a simpler um, thread for for OIDC. Uh, yeah, OIDC for VC, uh, and. Uh, Similar to kind of what they talked about at IIW, you could essentially, of course, uh, receive a, a credential over OIDC for VC and then, you know, present it later uh, uh, via DIDCOM or, or something else. So just um, AFJ growing uh, its ability to, um, yeah, use multiple protocols um, for for verifiable credentials and, and messaging and, uh, well, for, uh, yeah connections, I guess, and, and transfer. So anyways, uh, I thought that was uh, a nice presentation. There's no movement that I know of uh, on the PRs that have kind of stalled uh, from SICPA. Uh, I mean, it's something that, you know, Roots ID would love to work on, but uh, just no bandwidth for it. Um, and yeah, I, I haven't heard anybody step up and say they're they're going to do it. So that remains on hold, which is uh, sad. Um, and okay, so then uh, in terms of can getting into, me? oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, hey guys, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, sorry, I can hear I've you been, now. Uh, Hi hey guys, sorry for joining up late. I've been having like technical difficulties with my Zoom, my browsers, I had to restart, reinstall a bunch of things. I don't know why it's acting up uh, this morning. Uh, did I miss anything? Sorry. You missed, ev you missed everything. No, uh, no, no, it's uh, it's good. Uh, Roto was just saying that he's going to meet with Phil today uh, talking about uh, carry uh, uh, the did method, uh, oh, nice. carry, carry light uh, specifically. And so we're looking forward to hearing about that. Uh, and that was pretty much it. We were just going through status updates. Mm -hmm. I was saying that they did the OIDC for VC um, the demo in the Aries Framework JavaScript meeting. Um, I don't know, Alex, do you have any updates in terms of maybe um, 
Brian's but work? I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, like right now I'm working on the deep peer for the Veramo framework. So like I'm pretty much, uh, yeah, replacing like uh, I'm copying uh, the Brian's deep peers and trying to like uh, um, format it as a plugin pretty much. Okay, so um, for the Veramo PR, pretty much like I opened the issue and then gotcha. I'm trying to like solve it myself. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, uh -huh. so you're using Brian's uh, did peer implementation, Aviary yeah. Tech did peer impl, uh, adapting it as a plugin for mm -hmm. Veramo. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because uh, I was looking at also like um, there's a couple of did peers actually like in JavaScript. Uh, Sigma has one like a did peer resolver, and also like AFJ has like their own did peer resolvers. And uh, I noticed that the Sigma guys opened um, an issue on the did peer of the AFJ guys because the formatting like the multi base it was like waff, and it was like the same issue that like I recall that Brian and I were having. So you know, like the formatting like like the keys. Uh, I thought that was fine while I was looking into it, but yeah, uh, I can okay. link the. Um, uh, I can see. Because uh, I saw that uh, Hakan opened an issue, I think. Okay. Good. Let me. Uh, I'm just going to repost uh, our meeting page today in case. You don't have it. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Yep, I'll put it up in the in the um, great. Good. All right. Good update. Um okay. So uh then in turn okay, so then kind of updates, but in uh taking us into our discussion topics, AIP three. Uh so we did um attend that Wednesday meeting and talked about, hey, how does how do we move forward with AIP3? Um, my brain is trying to remember, but I'm also going to put the page here for everybody to see. So that was the 25th meeting. Um, So I need to go through and note the uh, RFCs uh, that are included in the V2 spec uh, on the HackMD. Uh, HackMD is here. Um, so, hmm. Do you guys think I should put that just in the notes portion here? Uh, so we say which, which ones uh, are included but then the corresponding RFCs. So, you know, like, uh, I guess there's an RFC for trust ping one. I should list that maybe underneath here in the notes section. Does that sound good to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I'll put those in there. Um, but also I guess, uh, the list of possible things to be listed in AIP3 uh, is growing significantly, um, which I, 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 I don't think I'd push back, but you know, I kind of said, uh, do we need to add these extra things? Uh, you know, cause I wanna see AIP3 move forward with Didcom uh, V2, obviously, um, but yeah. I guess uh, there's a bunch more things uh, and maybe that's a good thing because then maybe you have more uh, interest from the rest of the community in seeing AIP3 move forward. I don't know. Any thoughts on, on this list? We have uh, Anon creds, W3C formatted stuff, BBS plus, did web, uh, UX OCA supplements, action menu push notifications and bluetooth nfc was was mentioned i i guess like i'm trying to figure out what's the purpose of aip3 uh, the purpose yeah. is for aries agents to have a target essentially of of uh you know some bundle of um you know, specs, implementations, things that, that would make it so that 
the Aries agents have taken a step forward uh, and but remain interoperable. So they don't just diverge right into all the different paths uh, that that. Uh, you know, maybe one supports W3C format uh, credentials, the other one supports the non-creds, and now they can't uh, understand each other's <laughs> verifiable credentials, right? So so there needs to be this kind of foundational uh, interop profile that that everyone can target so that uh, we're moving, or the, the community is exactly. moving forward, but they can interop. Got it. So this is only like for agent, like Aries wallets, sorry. Uh, well, like area specific, uh, like for that area specific community, right? Yeah, I mean, I it's my belief that Aries has enough um, gravity within the industry that if if this is you know if AIP three exists, then you know others that are outside the Aries community will will be interested in targeting AIP three as well but i guess you you've got to gain momentum for that within aries first right so if, right, right, if, no, right. if nobody in aries uh, wants aip3 as defined then yeah I, I, that's the opposite of what we want to see so yeah definitely i guess yeah because like one of my big question i guess was like um i don't see like other people rushing in like adopting Bitcoin v2 no. and i was wondering why is there a reason like are they happy with Bitcoin v1 do they like i was trying to figure out um uh like what's their in, like what's other people's incentives to adopt AIP3 like Animo, like right like Sam, like their wallet. And uh I guess uh, they like it sounded like they have a lot of like legacy stuff that they need to also like think about when like migrating over. And that's something that like I guess like we don't really think much because we don't have like any productions app uh and like all that like we don't have like anything like deployed and like we don't have to worry about like migrating and like luckily uh all that all of that like uh stuff so yeah like uh i think for them to make like uh, the conversion over to ip3 we need to like sell it uh like i don't know i don't know if it's selling it but uh it sounds to me that there's like a lot of hurdles for them to like migrate over and stuff like that uh like from uh, so I think that this, the closer we are to whatever they're doing, the most likely we will have uh, like migration and adoption from the current like Aries community. Uh, so whatever like makes them adopt it, I'm all for it. Uh, I guess that's my uh, yeah my perspective on all this stuff. Like of course I don't think we'll be able to like implement all this stuff ourselves. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, fair. Other thoughts? Well, I think that that's the goal of this group, try to make the 80s and 80s frameworks adopting this can be true, right? I think that, that there's a, I, the whole community agreed that this can be true is, is a nice path to go. And of course, that there's no immediate incentives, but once the, the frameworks are ready to have a digit combi two. Everybody using the frameworks is gonna sham can sham to digit combi two more easily, right? Yeah. It, it certainly is proven. Uh, uh, you know, really good comments. I think uh, observations. Uh, it, it is interesting to look at it from the standpoint of, okay, I'm Akapai. I have did v one. Didcom v2 is some kind of improvement, but is it actually changing like their lives? <laughs> uh, you know, other than being uh, very difficult for them to adapt. I mean, it sounds like uh, quite a bit of work has already been put into it, and you know, it's not done. So it's it's this interesting. Um, is it just a nice to have? for, for uh, the group like what is that that it would probably be something good that we can provide is a succinct message of why did come v1 why migrate other than pierce the new new thing and there's some simplicity but you know saying that it's did come v2 is simpler maybe uh is a tough selling point when it's not simpler for them in terms of implementation <laughs> uh, 
Then fortunately, like the most simple thing for them is just like do nothing and like <laughs> keep the legacy stuff, right? Like yes, uh, yeah. But 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 it's a good point to 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 throw to the user did it come user group where Daniel Sam Sardea has to give me the where are the selling points? Yeah. So did it come be one? Yeah, right. Which, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 why did it come be one? Is where are the the gaps on this combi one? that that's gonna be nice to to move ahead yeah okay well that would be um that would be a good thing to ask right in the user group now no user group today right uh rodo uh no not not today not today that's, because it's the fifth, uh, yeah, fifth. Monday. so the next okay. one that is i think february 6th is going to be working group yeah and um, so the other the 13th uh, monday 13th is going to be in the next user group. yeah wait today's okay. the specification right i don't think even that oh to, today is nothing because it's when we agree that we're going to have oh we cancel uh, today first, yeah for, first monday it's okay. gonna be working group specification, and then the next three Mondays the three, of yeah. the month, yeah, is so user, user group. If, if, they, if there is a happen to be a fifth Monday, they wanna skip it. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah. I guess today is the fifth Monday of the month. I didn't even notice that. Okay. Um, all right. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, important conversation, right? Because uh, uh, I guess everybody here is basically coming from the, you know, oh, I don't have really a legacy that I have to maintain. We all like did come V2, <laughs> even though we we know that, uh, you know, uh, there's complexities that even we're trying to wrestle with. Um, so I guess in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm, I'm, I'm a double agent because um, I implemented part of V1 in the Pico system. Uh, it seems like a long time ago now. And um, but I but I worked closely with Phil Windley, who after after some discussions that I was not privy to with um, Sam Curran and Daniel Hardman, when he recruited some students to do some work on the Pico system, he wanted them to do it in Dincom V2. But no one's ever explained to me why. So uh, I'm 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 a little different, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, that's that's good feedback. So, so, so you can try out your arguments on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, I'm attending this meeting so that I can support the students. I suggested to the students that they attend this meeting, but it's too early in the morning for them. Mm, fair. Yeah, hopefully they can make it to the user group meetings. Uh, yeah, since those are later. Okay, good. Um, anything else that we want to say or give feedback for the AIP three? I suppose. Um, yeah. Any? I mean, any thoughts on this other stuff? Uh, you know, some of it's a little bit outside of our um range other than did web uh obviously did peer i guess a, a question i had whenever we say like did the support do we mean that are these the dids for the did come or are these the dids that can be resolved in the agent right because like uh, those are like slightly two different things. Like you can mm. issue a credential to a dead prism without having to have like a dead prism to do that come. Interesting. Yeah. Give give me the uh, give, give me some more uh, details on that. As I've never really thought about that. Nuance. No, for, 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 for me, it's just for the communication. It's just the, how how you establish the communication between two peers and which okay. met method are you gonna use to establish that connection. What happened okay, in, in about protocols is, is different stuff. It's, it may, maybe it's part of the, but I think it's not in, it's in not in any AIP. So maybe that, that's a good point also to add. When you do like uh, this wacky 
did come, the, the issue credential. Which method do you support? I think it's, right. I don't know if that's clear. And I don't know even if that should be on the AIP. So, uh, but good point to maybe to discuss in, in the Eris call, I think. Yeah, I guess Lance, what I was talking about, like if you like the subject of a credential, like I can have a did key that can be my identifier, but like I establish a connection using a did peer. So like you issue the credential to a did key, but the the connection is established via like a did peer. That's what I meant. So uh, in that case, uh, well, I guess what I what does but what's the difference between what you have to support for that? Right. So, uh, it, it, is it that you can stick any did in in when you issue? You could stick any did, even if you can't right, exactly, resolve it. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, but is that is that practically? Uh, what do you mean? So, like worthwhile? I, like, would you, would you issue a, a you know a credential to a did that you can't resolve? Resolve? Like, I don't think so. Right? Like, you wouldn't, because then you can like verify like the keys and that kind of stuff but yeah. uh i mean if you like somebody gives you that identifier via like a secure connection can you assume that identifier is uh is uh legit quote unquote right because like if you give them your identifier like after you establish the connection like hey uh, please i uh, give me a credential for this uh, key for this identity for this did uh and then they can issue the data and then they can sign uh, it, it or... uh, the, the issue should always be able to resolve it yeah, yeah. And, uh, and challenge okay are you actually the controller of this did correct yeah. and, and, and check that but yeah for, for the communication you you are always be using like uh, private dids mm -hmm. and ephemeral dids that's why we we, we use key did it key did it peer or did it carry in the future yeah so I guess if we do, we only want to use ephemerals because then did web is pretty much the opposite of ephemeral, uh, right? For well, uh, for the, the, well, I mean the, the idea with the ephemeral is is or there are two two main points. One is being ephemeral because you can rotate it whenever you mm -hmm. want, and the second one is that you can res you should be able to resolve it without trying to go to a maybe to, to the cloud, to a DNS service or whatever to resolve. Yeah. That's, I think that's it. That's going to be fast because you, you need to resolve it every time you, you send a message and you change the, the DID. Yeah, okay. Okay, is there anything else I need to... So... What would our message to, let's say, in the next Aries working group meeting, do we feel like we need to bring this up or to clarify so that kind of people are thinking in terms of, oh, did peer for communication or not? I think that that's clear. I, what, what I would like to ask if the AIP should state you should be able to uh, in order, for example, for the for the issue credential, do you need to understand or be able to resolve uh, in the DIDs or check the ID? I don't think that should be on, on the AIP, but would be nice to ask, right? To be sure okay. that it's, you you yeah. you shouldn't be a, you you don't need to be an indie uh, agent to 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 pass the AIP, right? Okay. I don't know how how, it, how, how is that being handled on, on the Aries test harnet? It's all indie. Yes. There are different versions on based on the on the ledger. Mm, that's a good that question. Compare? I know there's did orb. Uh, there certainly is. Uh, it stands up uh, indie related infrastructure as well. So I'm sure there are tests using uh, did mm. indie. But yeah, that's okay. a good question. Um, so probably it's a, it's a parameter on the on the configuration, right? Which DID method do you want to support? Or are yeah. you able to support? Uh, yeah, supported and 
how do you configure to use did and or et cetera? Okay. Yeah, I have not looked at that detail, but I should. The because like I'm looking at the AIP two and the way they have it, they have like the base requirements. Then they have like different quote unquote feature. They have like the indie cred, they have the mediate, they have the LD credential, BBS credential. Uh, so it's like they have different sub profiles almost. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, cause to me, like an AIP, it's like a list of RFCs. So we would have to create like an RFC for each did method that we support, I guess, like in this case. But, mm, yeah. That's interesting. Is that true? I'm just looking, uh, let's see here, pull this in here so that everybody's looking at the same thing. Sure uh, okay, so Aries RFCs. Um, I don't know. I which I uh, zero three zero two. Zero three. Uh, zero three zero oh, two. Aries. Hmm. Am I? Should I not be in features? Where should I no. be here? Um, I send the link in the in the chat and the also be Aries RFC slash concepts. Oh, concepts. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. For the interop profile. Okay, AP two. And then Yeah, if you go out of that. What am I searching for here? Oh, base requirements. Okay. Protocols agents did come. Mediators, wallets, goal codes, X. They've come mind types. <laughs> yeah, but did use, key. use of did key. Okay, yeah. is static peer dids. Okay. And this is this is what we have listed in AIP three right now, right? Yeah. yeah, static peer so. dids. Okay, so then the question is, what other did methods have to be listed, and do we need RFCs for those? It's surprising that. Uh... So if you scroll a little bit down, I think there's like an indie one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, it jumped on me. I thought it would just yeah. go down to the next. Oh, is it lower here? Yeah, this so yeah, if you scroll, yeah, see how they have like different LD cred and they have different like RFCs for these two for the BBS credentials and yeah. then a little about yeah, in the attachments. Uh yeah, this kind of stuff. So like uh, yeah. I don't know like how like in the credentials, like I because like those should be like an on threads now, right? So those should not be indie anymore. Those right. should be like an on threads, those are like uh, ledger agnostic. So, how do we want to figure out what's like? Is there a default for an uncred or like, like, right? Like, uh, or like, how do you go about about that? Since now they're not indie anymore, right? They are ledger agnostic. Yeah, I have to believe that there's probably if if one doesn't exist, there's got to be a. Uh, Let's find the indie one first. Okay, indie attachments. Is there anything in here about anon creds? Mm. What about concepts? No. <clears throat> oh, it's got to be coming, right? I mean, it's worth asking, though. Yeah, I think we should definitely bring it up. Like, how do we go about negotiating like an on-creds did method support? Yeah. Now, just going back to his list. Indie right, he has it listed here mm -hmm. as indie creds to a non-creds. But yeah, what are they going to do in terms of RFCs and stuff for this? Yeah, there's going to be like a new one on creds RFC for sure. Okay. And so that's why this is here for you, Alex, mm -hmm. is to create an RFC for DidWeb. Yep, yep, yep. 
Okay, so it can be included. Right, right, because like there's no like did web RC quote unquote yet. Oh, and this is interesting. So, but this did peer method two RFC is the static did peer or not? Or is this one too broad? Is is that what I we're think, specifying? I think that was the issue that we were talking about. Like we wanted to only use like the second method because like okay. otherwise. So like like you said, like everybody's on the same page. Because uh, yeah, I think this specification like is zero one and two. Oh, it's too broad. Okay. Yeah. Targeted generation methods, several different algorithms. See this. The RFC targets method zero. Method one, okay, right. Yeah. So, so now they're saying basically constrain it further. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So then, this should be updated, probably, right? With notes mm -hmm. saying, um, yeah, maybe like make like a new RFC and just reference this one and like, hey, out of this RFC, we're just using method two. Well, you said create a new RFC. Yeah, I think I think that's what Sam was suggesting, right? For for peer dids, was he? Yeah. Okay, right. Yes, you're right. Okay. Yeah, just so we can like only have it for like the second algorithm, num algo two. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, how do I find this thing here? Feature static like new. Uh, Mm, fair enough for now. Okay. All right. Well, that's, um, yeah, that's important, I think. So we're essentially, if we kind of think in terms of the layers for trust over IP, yeah, we're addressing the layer one things in this case. So that's good. And yeah, the legacy peer stuff, I'm, I've heard Sam talk about it, but I'm not super familiar with it. Yeah. Sounds like some kind of adaption they have to make in order, I guess these weren't like, uh, they don't follow the spec or something like that. So they have to do something. <clears throat> I think maybe those are for indie dids or something. Okay. How do you guys, how do you guys feel about like having like UX in an RFC? Like, I don't know how, <laughs> how would one go about that? Like I, I in my mind, like AIPs are like more like backend technical, like you're trying to negotiate like what keys and stuff support. Like I don't think that uh, how you go about displaying should be re like, is there a standard way of displaying it? Like, is that gonna like differentiate like the the underlying metadata that's getting signed? Like, I don't think so, right? The ability to display credentials, um, it, it, it is an interesting question. I think it's natural for uh, protocol designers and people who care about crypto and stuff like that to, right. be, to say, ah, UX, you know, whatever. But yeah, yeah, the way. <laughs> I, there probably is some wisdom in trying to drive agents to support OCA because they're very interested in different translations and different views for credentials but I've only heard them talk about it. I haven't really, you know, gotten into it too much. It certainly has a bunch of different layers that are defined. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, probably if, if you're someone who's familiar with this stuff, it feels like this is just as important and just as technical, probably. Uh, and, uh, you know, well, anyways, it's a good question. I don't know. I, I probably... I don't think it's something that we should really, you know, spend any effort on. If they want to define it, they can define it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'll go because like we don't have like do we have like an OCA RFC? Like, I was like looking for one and like uh, yeah, mm. I yeah. I guess yeah. they would have to. So that's why, like, uh, like, 
right? Because like you're like now like you're requiring agents like and wallets to support a specific display format as well. Like oh, here uh, we go. Look, they listed it here. Oh, zero seven five. Yeah, I can I can post that in there if you uh. Chat. Yeah. Oh, because it's uh it's in uh features. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know which current that is. Is that Sam or Steve <laughs> Steven? <laughs> I just see SW current, so I yeah, don't I know. Yeah. Steven. Yeah. yeah. So uh oh. Yeah, I remember this one now. Uh, yeah, because I, I guess like another thing that uh, I noticed is that the wallet rendering, so like pretty much the same thing, like the same specification, right? Like to display credentials, but like diff is like working on a different specification, right? So like I see what Daniel Harmon is saying, how like there's like multiple organization working on similar standards and there's a lot of overlap in terms of uh, technology because like it was, uh, yeah, like it just restarted the group uh like this year and like because like i was looking at the spec it was like two years old or whatever they were saying uh and uh yeah i noticed that a diff they're also trying to work on uh, how to uniform like uniformly display credentials and that kind of stuff as well so yeah uh, yeah it, that that this kind of stuff is it's difficult for someone like me because <laughs> i i want to see everybody uh you know working together, but it seems like everybody wants to have their own implementation <laughs> or their own protocol. And yeah. I mean, I get it. If, if <laughs> when you do that, you know, you're much smarter about what's there, but gosh, yeah, it's frustrating to me. It's, it's, it's going to be a market and then one of them is going to be <laughs> they're all going to adapt whatever. Or, or, there yeah, well. or not because the market takes so long to develop, uh, you know, something else comes along. You know, this is this is why JavaScript, uh, you know, was so bad, but so well adopted for so long because it got there very quickly <laughs> and <laughs> experienced rapid adoption. So it was yeah. working. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. So all right any other thoughts uh i think i think it was important for sure to be talking about i, yeah, I was please. behind behind you when you uh, talked about did legacy peer and thought i would throw a sample got it so what's the encoded information in there i guess is so, that like a prior so prior to aip1 mm -hmm. uh, when we implemented whatever aries uh, we called the uh, the string starting uh, 8ECJD, et cetera. We called that a did. Oh, Jesus. It, it did not begin with did colon and a method colon. It was just uh, ah. it was just a string. And and I I have many agents that that are using those things as if they were dids. And uh, to bring us into the third millennium, uh, we should be, uh, we should treat those with dead colon legacy pure colon. So that's what that is. You were wondering what it was. It's a uh, fair. Thank you. Historical thing from the previous millennium. It's very old stuff. Yeah. Well, good. I'm, I'm sure there's, uh, yeah, uh, well. Obviously, it's called legacy. So there, there's there's systems out there that have these things, and they need to keep working. So good. Okay. Um, anything else with AIP three? So I guess if we were to like start, like, uh, how would we go about? It? Let's say like we figure out what we want to implement. Yeah magically and like how would like do we want to i i like the idea of like doing test driven development for ap3 i think this is like a a good place to like write tests first and then write the code for the test what do you guys think about that just because like right like the way we define tests i feel like is going to pretty much um yeah like isn't that supporting ap3 means passing tests so yeah uh, so that's that's one of my goals right now is to uh begin to contribute to the Aries agent test harness 
AIP3 related tests. Maybe I'm not sure that I'll be able to tag them uh, as AIP3 yet since that's, you know, maybe not defined. Uh, and so that would be cheating a bit to, to tag them as AIP3, but um, to, to start, yeah, essentially DIDCOM V2 related tests, there are some already, um, but, uh, you know, some more so that at yes, the very sir. least agents can be scored. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you that that defining tests, I think, are uh, useful. Uh, and of course, we have customers that that want to be able to show DIDCOM uh, V2 uh, capability and get a score within the Aries agent test harness. So uh, we have incentive not to just do it for an exercise, but also, um, yeah, to, to, to produce real scores. Right. And that, I guess like the, that way, like since we get to define the test, like we can kind of like, uh, yeah, like see like what uh, exactly like all the for and whatnot. So, yeah, I guess like if we want to like support Cardano first, we can do that because like, yeah, like for an credit stuff like that, I guess. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I guess that is one interesting thing to consider is which tests would we want to prioritize first? So if um, right now there are Aries agent present proof establishing connections, which includes a trust ping, I think, uh, and then wacky issuance, I think uh, things like discover features, et cetera, we would be very interested in, right? Instead of focusing as much on, on credentials, um, kind of getting towards the, I guess, more message-based, communication-based portions of DIDCOM V2. Thoughts on that? I think that would be good for Bruce's use case, for instance. And yeah, we could start showing uh, like the did method things that we've talked about today in terms of did web, did peer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I also like started uh, rather than for what you call it, like protocol or yeah, trying like different uh, yeah, like out of bound invitations, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, I guess like how about like mediation? Like how do we do we test mediation? Like do we test like if an agent is a mediator. Or like, uh, do we test if an agent supports? Like, I guess it has to support mediation, quote unquote. Uh, if it's an offline agent, so how do we? Uh, one question I was wondering: How do they go about testing like mediation? Like in this case, how they have like the mediate sub profile? I guess. Like, uh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, you, 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 no, you actually have a role, for example, in the eighty and. In the test harness, you have a role. So based on your role, you need to support whatever your role uh, requires. Okay. So if, if, if you are the mediator, you need to support the mediator role. And if you are the, the wallet, you need to support it. Yeah, that is, uh, right. I don't know what's the name of that, but right. <laughs> the Asian role. Yeah, fair enough. Right. right. So, so Faber, Bob, Alice, all these things, there's got to be a mediation uh, role. So I'll, I'll look that up as well. Yeah. Cause like, I guess the are like in Waukee, like you need to test both that you can issue and then both that you can hold and like present. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So test an agent read message. Okay. okay. Cool. The first all for to be happening is like to have like did come be two envelope, like right. Uh, and I guess so another question I had like uh, Sam mentioned that uh, the AIPs are backwards compatible, uh, like in the last meeting. But is that the case? Like if AIP three also support AIP two, technically, like like because I know you mentioned that. At the very end of the meeting, which I was kind of like, I thought that AIPs are breaking changes. Uh, hmm. My, uh, no, I, I don't think he, he, he said that. Oh. Uh, that, that you can support the, the AIP3 and not support AIP1 or AIP2, right? Uh, that was my understanding. Uh, uh, 
a particular agent technology could um, could support more than AIP3. It could also support older versions, but that so, wasn't required for AIP3. Uh, so is AIP2 able to talk to AIP1 or no? I thought so, but I could be wrong. Okay, I guess that's what I meant. Like, right, because like AIP3 cannot talk to AIP2. Right. And I, I would assume, I don't know if the encryption envelope uh, stuff, for instance, right, might be introduced in AIP2, but not AIP1 in terms of, you know, the differences. So how how would, uh, if you were only AIP1, how would you do AIP2 if you don't support those envelopes? Right, right, right. It's kind of like, how do you exchange OIDC credential if you don't support OIDC, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't recall him saying about the backwards compatibility, but uh, maybe what he's saying is if you stack, you know, AIP1, AIP, if you, you could support, I would think, you know, all of them, but you just... Uh, yeah, I guess like, I, I just wanted to make sure that AIP2 is not required to talk to AIP3 and vice versa. Uh, that was like my because like that cannot like right like the only way to talk to AIP two is like to support it can be one right so be one supporting right. yeah see like we should do that so yeah I guess like I don't know, okay unless maybe like I just imagine but I hope that's not the case yeah yeah we could we could ask for for clarity for sure but uh, I'm hopeful that it's not that right 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 yeah. um. Uh, also, did we want to discuss uh, at the Aries Working Group, we had discussed what they called uh, new entry points uh, for a protocol. Uh, so we had had some discussion in terms of, and this this touches back with uh, the JFF stuff that uh, Alex and, and Brian and others had been doing, where they didn't necessarily probably support what, like, proposal uh an offer so yeah. maybe yeah which i would request yeah. just request uh and so well, we, and they they were talking about should that be uh so the 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 role is here issuer right and so the concept is issuer should have to support all of this but do you create a new role that has a new entry point that says uh you know uh, I am a non-proposal issuer or something like that, right? So defining a new role, and then I kind of suggested defining a new, what did I suggest? Protocol, maybe, like a sub-protocol. Um, so, yeah, any thoughts on that? Roles versus sub-protocols? It seems to me, like I always think in terms of Legos, uh, it seems to me that if something's complex and you don't want to support all of that complexity, you break it into, into you know, sub parts, right? So, so you're, you know, you had this funky looking Lego, maybe you need to break it into simpler looking Legos that can make the funky uh, piece, but, you know, that's a simple way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. I guess like the, to me, similar to like supporting multiple credentials, like that way they like added like V1.2, V1.3. Uh, can we keep track of that that way? Like we're using like sub versions? Well, well the, so... the, the, the versions in, in a protocol are, are like sembar, so it's incremental. So that that's, that cannot be used. What uh, the, the other problem is that you are trying to use the, the um, feature discovery protocol to understand what the other patient uh, can do, can, can produce. That's why we try to stick with the roles because roles is part on, on the protocol query on, on the feature discovery. So I, I also ask if you can add another like parameter on that protocol, but that's kind of fixed and everybody's understanding so maybe the fastest way is to create sub like sub roles or, or different roles inside the, the protocol to understand if you have this role you support everything you you have on, only the, the 
the role that supports issue credentials for three. So, you know, once you receive the, that the other Asian support for all three, you know that the, this, this issue is gonna only issue credential without uh, accepting any, anything else. Yeah, but isn't the, I, I don't know, like to me, like it might be like an issuer is also always gonna be a holder and is also always gonna be a verifier. Uh, well, not not, not uh, a holder of what? I'm just saying, like, I mean, if I'm, yeah, like in terms of like supporting protocol, right? Like, I need to, like, even if I'm an issuer, like, I'm not only supporting the issuer roles, right? Because, like, I need to hold well, credentials. You, you can have both. Well, no, an issuer don't don't need to to hold credentials, right? Got issue credential and give it to you and delete everything and don't store it anyway. So it's not needed to to hold the credential. Right, right. And yeah, like I guess like in the protocol sense, yeah, it's self correct. But if we live like in a world where like everything is our credentials, like I assume that everything everybody will need to hold credentials. Oh yeah, in, in the in the issue, for example, in, in that one that is so, and this is the issue credential protocol. There are two roles: so issuer and holder. Yep. Right. So, if you support both, you you just in the query in, in discover feature query, you 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 say so. I suppose it's like a, an array. So, it's yep. issuer and holder. Yeah. Yeah. I guess like what I'm trying to say is that I would argue that. Uh, you would support always both roles. Like I think, uh, those, like I don't think you would ever support only one role. Well, if I'm in a wallet, I'm only supporting holder, right? No issue. Uh, I mean, yeah, but like you can also issue credentials for your wallet, right? Like issue. Like... You can issue, but you can support the protocol or not. If you right. don't want to issue credential, you just say don't support. You just say I'm only a holder. Right, right, right. Like, I guess what I'm like, correct, correct. Uh, but what I would say is that having a wallet that only holds credential, like, is not that helpful per se. Like, you also need to, like, issue, present proof, like, be a verifier, right? Like, you can also, like, you need to, like, present verifying credentials. Like, you, you want to verify, like, your friend's credentials for whatever reason. Like, you're inviting them over, like, when it was COVID and, like, wanted to make sure that their COVID pass was right, right? Like, I don't know. Like, I had that happen to me. Like some of my friends, they like wanted to check my COVID infection, uh, like th that kind of things. So like you're also going to be a verifier and a holder, like most of the times. Uh, I I think that that is uh, often true, Alex. Um, but then I think in JFF, for instance, you would wanted you will you guys essentially created a new role, right? That 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 it was some subset of this issuer or holder role. Well, I we ended up creating actually like a whole new protocol, right? Cause like in our protocol, we also had did like some did authentication, like try to like log it in and like prove like exact, like prove ownership of dids and sign some things and then offer the credentials like all like in one type of thing. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, like we ended up creating like our own like authenticated issued credential, like minimal protocol, quote unquote, that was yeah. very simple. All right, so since since we're out of time, maybe uh, so some food for thought over the next week. Consider what 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 would uh, things look like if uh, there was a much more nuance in these roles, uh, so that to take into account things like what Alex is talking about from JFF, uh, where they almost created uh, you know they composed a bunch of other parts, uh, and yeah, how would you name these things? And yeah, consider that. But great meeting today. Great to see you all. And uh, yeah, we'll meet back uh, next week. Thanks, Lance. Thank Bye you, Lance. Nice training. Bye. Bye.